The word of God is alive and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow. And it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart. All scripture is God-breathed and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God might be mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth, or accurately handling the word of truth. One more day being renewed to the praise of the glory of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the divine energy and in the divine health. As we walk along in this church age with the unique and greatest privileges which can never be repeated again to the next generation or to the next dispensation. But it is only for us in this church age so that we could take maximum out of it. Much is given for us and much is expected from us. When we are walking in the fellowship of blood, God, the Holy Spirit, and we are really not grieving him nor squelching him by the confession of our sins, since our Lord has made us to be kings and priests, as per Revelation 1, 6 and 5, 10. And since we are being for him to be our witnesses, the witnesses that we can give on this earth, that God gave his son recorded to our master or my witnesses or testimony for him, if that is one end to witness among the angels or to the fallen angels or to the head of the department of those fallen angels, Lucifer, the other end, what we can show forth and what we can do is the exact representation of his righteousness which has been characterized for us. That henceforth we live, we live not for the flesh but for the righteousness of God. And the everlasting righteousness that is going to come in Second Peter 3.13, our Lord mentioned. We are being called with a greater purpose and a greater duty laid down upon our shoulders to live in righteousness, to walk in righteousness. And if we give, we have to give cheerfully in the righteousness of God, which could be absolutely accounted for us as per First Corinthians chapter 9. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. If this righteousness, if you are not able to execute, then the everlasting righteousness which is going to come, as told by Daniel, we are not able to look upon that. With him always reigns righteousness. Our Lord said, first seek me, my righteousness and my kingdom, then everything will be given to you. What else can we lack on this earth? If we are at all lacking, we are lacking the faith which could be incorrupted, the love that could be incorrupted. We are not having proper faith. We are not having proper love. We are not having proper belief. And if at all we are having, that is of a corruption real, not of a one which is absolutely pure and holy and healthy. If a man is able to walk up from his sleep, if a man is able to sit, if a man is able to stand, there should be something of a divine spark that causes him to do that. If a man loses his strength, you know how he collapses. It is not by his own strength that he is able to stand up. There is something which is moving him. There is something which is really making him to cause to think what exactly he is capable of doing while walking or sitting or standing or getting up or running. Equalizing of his equilibrium of the body with his weights, with his essence, with his work. If at all, look for yourself, you have an aged old man in your home, maybe your father or uncle or someone. The way how he was and when he gets sick, he is not able to stand for more than a minute and he collapses. Then you will learn something over there. If it were not by the will of God that we can stand, walk or run or eat, then there is nothing in this physical mechanism of the body. There is nothing, absolutely nothing. Likewise, our unique spiritual life, if it has not been constructed or if it has been done by the ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to execute this protocol plan of God in the three stages of adult spiritual life, spiritual self-esteem or spiritual autonomy, and then by spiritual maturity. Then this spiritual life that you're constructing is nothing, is zero, zero point zero zero in the sight of God. You will absolutely collapse if you're not in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. 
You will not have anything to show for, though you have been given such kind of a great privilege in the eternity. Though you have been called to represent the righteousness of God, you cannot, you will not, and you cannot. It has to be by God. As such, physically, you are walking, you are running, you are dancing, you are sitting, you are standing. It is, there is something which really guides us, and that is the divine spark of our Lord, which is maintaining us. If our Lord doesn't cause to have that equilibrium to stand for, then we are nothing. We are zero, zero, point zero, zero. But it is the grace of our Lord who has given us this great privilege to stand, to run, to kneel down, and to pray for God. As long as you may think that you may have physical energy, you are daily, you are daily doing your physical exercises, and you can be standing from, no, there is something. And that something is nothing but the grace of Lord for us. Without that grace, we cannot stand, we cannot sit, we cannot run, we cannot work, we cannot even breathe. Though your physical mechanism may be working properly, but it doesn't have the fuel, it cannot run. If you consider your vehicle or uh, anything. For us, the fuel is our God. For us, the strength is our Lord. In the same manner, there is something for this work which we need to do for the church age, unique spiritual life. Without that, you cannot. And people may think they are having their own energy to do it. People may think they are capable of doing with legalism. They are capable of doing with XYZ trends, but they cannot do it, dear brother, and take it granted. It is not possible. And it is no way possible to please that great Lord without walking in the terms and conditions of His grace upon us. We may try to do one hundred and one reasons to please Him by our works, by following legalism, by thinking that we can be justified by the works of the law, but you cannot. We need to look very cautiously or very cautiously about these things, dear brethren. The unique spiritual life which the Lord has designed, He has designed Himself, and we need to follow that. And when we read in the Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians through proper isagogical, categorical, and exegetical expression of the word, with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. And if you are not able to read it, then you will never know. As you will never know, as long as you live physically on this earth, there is some driving force of equilibrium which causes us to stand, to run, to sit which could be done only by our Lord. And not any man can think he can able to stand with his own energy. And as long as he thinks that he's standing in his own energy, then he is a fool to think so. The handling of the one should come by my Lord God Almighty. No matter how healthy you are, you cannot stand. It requires something more. And that is nothing but the grace of the Lord to design for us to be so. And many of the people do not understand the simple truth, even applicable to the unique spiritual life. The greater the unique spiritual life wherewith you and I should learn, should come, should know, to pause us, should really execute to know the truth and to understand and to cause us to make to know what reality it is. We the men are not able to understand this. But rather, we are thinking that could be absolutely vain and vague in our lives. Fear God, give glory which is due unto Him before you can close your eyes. Before you can absolutely perish out, not believing in Christ. And you can come back to learn the word of the Lord more accurately, more clearly, more in truth. So that you could really understand the purpose of calling that which He has chosen us to be for Him. Dear brethren, you need to know what are we in Christ, where are we in Christ, how are we in Christ. And if you are not able to look upon those things, the Lord alone should make you to know those things. When you desire to know about them, when you desire to learn about them, when you desire to really have a compromising attitude about them. So which way you want to go, you decide it is your life. And if you are not interested to know better, then the Lord alone should help you. So consider our things as we shall come back and continue in the next tape. Because the only thing what we can ask for our Lord is to thank Him as long as He keeps us alive on this earth to do His work. As long as He makes us to be fit. As long as He causes us to run the race. 
in physically as well as spiritually. Nothing can we tell to God than to thank Him for His brilliant plan, brilliant purpose, particularly emphasis upon the mystery doctrine of the church age. With great and unique privileges, being called as new spiritual species. To bow down and to get up and to stand and to run, there is some driving force. And that is nothing but the grace of our Lord given for us. That great divine spark imparted to us gives us grace to really run this, without which we cannot even call or look or understand or think. If not, this is just a chemical factory, but without the soul and the spirit, and without the grace of our Lord to do His work properly, we are nothing. So consider over this as we shall come back and continue in the next tape. Father, we are grateful for the privilege that was given to our fellowship through the word. We thank thee for this divine energy and the divine health and the physical energy and the physical health as well that thou hast bestowed upon us to work your work. We are not here entitled to work for any other thing than to work a great glory for you on this earth to get for you maximum glorification on this earth. Apart from this, we don't have anything on this earth for Lord to be done. To this section, Father, we pray that Lord get the whole Spirit will challenge us and bless us and cause us to think how thankful we need to be for you because of that one driving force which you have given to us to really drive for your glory. For we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen. <laughs> 